We know video games require some limitations, but these are just ridiculous. Stanley walked through the red door. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things badass video game characters cannot do. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. For this list, we're taking a look at video game characters with amazing abilities that are still unable to perform easy everyday tasks. Let me handle this. Number 10, say no to a challenge. What's that, Cloud? You think you can take him? Well, if you insist, nice knowing you. Sporadic battles are commonplace in most role-playing games. While these battles will help your character gain experience and level up, occasionally you just want to get on with the main quest. Remember, cut the ones that matter. I know, I know. Alas, some characters are simply incapable of rejecting a fight. In the Pokemon games, for example, there's always a fellow trainer waiting to challenge you around every corner. As much as you'd like to peacefully pass by, saying no to these battles is never an option. This is especially frustrating when you're almost completely drained of health, and since you can't flee, you have no choice but to accept that it's pretty much game over. Number 9. Remove their undergarments. Since you've been away, shit has changed around here. Grocery families ain't big no more. A lot of video games allow the player to dress their character however they see fit. You can even make them casually roll around in their underwear and nobody will really bat an eye. Ah, here's the blushing bride now. Let's begin the ceremony. One thing you can never seem to do, though, is have your character walk around in their birthday suit. Why do so many characters draw that line in taking off their tidy whities No homie love, no huh? Don't they eventually have to bathe? What if they need to get a colonoscopy? Hasn't anybody ever heard of going commando? We're watching you. Whatever you say, bitch. Of course, if you really want to get naked in a game, you can always play Saints Row 4. You're not wearing pants. This just got weird. It. Can I fly now? Knock yourself out. Number eight, hold a gun and a flashlight at the same time. I don't know how I survived. One can only do so much with two hands, but we're pretty sure that you can carry both a small gun and a flashlight simultaneously. <laughs> Apparently, this is too difficult for your character in Doom 3, though. So, you have to keep switching between these two items, which is especially inconvenient considering that the danger is always lurking in the dark. <laughs> hey. Alan Wake can carry a gun and a flashlight at the same time. Link can carry his sword and a lantern at the same time, if you count attaching it to his belt. Why can't you multitask here? Or at very least get a gun with a flashlight attached to it? Is there no duct tape on Mars? <laughs> Number 7. Make decisions for themselves. You said no, you wouldn't refuse. That's a yes, right? A fair deal of modern games are driven by choice, like the Mass Effect trilogy and, to a certain extent, the Stanley Parable. Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense, and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. For the most part, however, video games leave free will out of the question, giving players specific objectives to complete with no alternative. Mario has to save the princess, Donkey Kong has to reclaim his horde of bananas, Franklin has to help that stupid paparazzi if he makes the mistake of getting too close. Leave me out your shit, man. Oh, no, 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 we, we can make Boku bucks here, man. These video game characters are always being manipulated by their surroundings and controlled by a grand puppet master, incapable of making any decisions for themselves. Man, things just got kind of philosophical, eh? Yeah, God, you used to be cool. Just because I'm a gamer doesn't mean I'm not cool. Number six, break down wooden doors. <laughs> If a door is made of metal or solid titanium, it makes sense that you shouldn't be able to simply break it down. Last time we checked though, wooden doors are not indestructible. Even when they're locked from the other side, it's nothing that blunt force or a few explosives shouldn't be able to fix. Things that your character generally specializes in. Yeah, I guess there's a thing or two I could show you. Imagine how quickly we could blast through every Zelda dungeon if bombs worked on those locked doors. Alas, wooden doors are simply every video game character's kryptonite. You know, I could break you down, I just don't feel like it. If you want to get past one, either find a key or master the art of lockpicking, if that's an option. Number 5. Yell at annoying AI characters. I knew you'd be fine if you landed on your butt. In a perfect world, every AI character would be as awesome as Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. Are you real? 
Instead, we mostly get stuck with companions that are irritating, unhelpful, and share way too much information. Master Link, did you know that you were low on hearts? Yeah, I heard that beeping. That was me, I was beeping to let you know about the beeping. That's particularly infuriating when an AI character is constantly getting into trouble, or you have to rescue them. All we want to do is slap these characters across the face and tell them to shut up already. But the players are forced to be polite. God, I'll just save Zelda with my friggin' slingshot. Did you know Boots go on feet? Yeah, that's, uh... That's great. We're not sure how Link puts up with the likes of Navi and Fee, but his ability to stay cool clearly makes him a saint. Hey! Link! Number four, climb over small objects. Wait a second! I forgot my wallet! <clears throat> Don't you just hate it when you're so close yet so far? In many video games, you'll find yourself mere inches away from achieving your objective. All you have to do is climb over that small object. You better run. There's nothing else you can do here. This would be easy enough if your character were capable of jumping or grabbing onto ledges. These characters generally like to do everything the long, hard way with no room for shortcuts. Keep going, friend. That station was raided, but there's others up ahead. It's too bad you can't fit a forklift in your inventory. You will never get over a ledge. It's impossible. Number three, talk. So, you're the new kid everyone is talking about. What's your name? He doesn't talk, Elf King. He thinks he's hot shit or something. Gordon Freeman is a man of few words. Link is a man of few grunts, and Chell solely communicates through body language. Not that we can see it or nothing. Okay, what you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just you just jumped. The point is that none of these video game characters are cut out for careers in public speaking. Could you uh, repeat that, please? Given their extraordinary circumstances, you'd think that they would have something interesting to say every once in a while. What are your name? I'm Dexter. He's Jack. He's with me. Then again, maybe not all video game characters were meant to speak. Remember what happened when Samus finally opened her mouth in Metroid Other M? The word he so obviously chose, outsider, pierced my heart. Number two, touch most things. I mean, you're all trained killers. Some of you can kill with one touch. One touch! This is such an old mechanic that most people never question it anymore. But it seems kind of odd when you think about it. <laughs> Now, I'm sure that a Kremlin could do some serious damage to a monkey, but they'd actually have to bite him first, I assume. And how is it that Mario gets KO'd by a Goomba? You kill it by jumping on its head, but you touch one pixel of its side, and it's game over for you, plumber boy. Seriously though, Mega Man can kick the crap out of a handful of robot masters, but those spikes are a no-go, even if you just brush them with your arm. What the heck is with you guys? If the intruder can stand on your head, even if he has to freeze you first, do not hover over pits that are too large for him to jump over. We make those pits big for a reason. Before we get to our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, swim. Even open world games, such as Grand Theft Auto and Assassin's Creed, keep the characters restricted to certain areas. Often game developers contain these characters by surrounding them with the deadliest substance known to man, water. The idea that trained killers like Tommy Versetti or Altair can't swim is one thing, but you honestly expect us to believe that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Frogger can't survive in water? We can accept a lot of mind-boggling things in video games, but this is kind of going off the deep end. Do you agree with our list? You're playing for the wrong side, dude! What other mundane tasks are badass video game characters incapable of performing? For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant.